Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we'll see how I added a search page to my static Jekyll blog. This search feature is very simple. Type in the title, description or date and you'll immediately see the filtered posts. There are several steps involved to code this. Initially I thought to use some kind of Python backend, but then I stumbled across Svelte, which is a very interesting JavaScript compiler. The learning curve seemed very low, so I decided to give it a try. Usually I don't develop front ends, so I followed the tutorial on the Svelte website. I encourage you to do the same. Here you can grasp a few simple concepts, such as how to set up the app and its components, how their activity works, etc. Anyway, I suggest developing the app independently at first, outside of your Jekyll repository. This will make the initial prototyping easier and faster. You can in fact use mock data at this stage. Going back to the Jekyll blog, the main idea for a search page is that the browser gets the post data via JSON file. Since I already have a Jekyll liquid file that generates JSON ILD, I decided to adapt that and simplify it for this task. You can read more about JSON LD on this blog post. I kept the original field naming from JSON LD, but I removed unnecessary structures. In the end, for each blog post object, there are only six fields, four of which are useful to do the search matching title, excerpt, tags, and the modified date. The other two fields are the post URL and a picture. As you see, the for loop iterates through all the posts and this data is served on a specific endpoint. You just need to create a new page with a permalink. This was the backend part, very easy, no server needed. Now to the front end. To create a new Svelte project, you need to install Vite, a front end build tool, and run this command with npm. npm create Vite at latest. Now follow the prompts. This will create a new directory by cloning a git repository containing a Svelte web app template. The interesting files are in the src directory. Here you have the example counter component. But now we get back to the blog, where I created the search component. As you see, it's very simple. The browser connects to the Jekyll JSON post page we saw earlier and saves its content into an object. The second statement is the one that does the search. The arrow symbol is used to create anonymous functions. Here we are trying to match all posts based on at least one of the four categories. The feature that, when you type in something you get immediate results, is called reactivity. In Svelte, this is implemented with the dollar columns string you see here. The filtered post variable is updated every time the, de the text box changes. This automatic binding happens in the HTML section with the use of the Svelte variables. This means that there is no need to use an OK button to do the post filtering. In fact, when the search term variable changes, it triggers a call to the post.filter method automatically, finally saving filtered posts. To display the filtered posts, you can use a for loop that retrieves the title, URL and picture of each post. If you know Jekyll, this is similar to the liquid templating language. It's just interactive or reactive if you want. Anyway, in this case, the main.js file just contains a reference to the search.svelte file. To integrate this web app with your Jekyll blog, you need to configure it to move the compiled files into the underscore assets directory. This is done by adding some variables to the vita.config.js file. Just remember to add the compiled JavaScript assets directory to gitignore. Once you run npm build, everything should work smoothly and you should see your search page in your Jekyll blog. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.